and welcome to this Sunday edition of Words with Friends Live. I'm your host, Damon Crossan, a.k.a. Alpha Cat. It's 6.15 in some places, 9.15 in others. How does that work? I don't know. Space, math, space math. I don't follow that stuff. I just know what time it is. Like I said yesterday, we've all heard the old saying in life, nothing is certain but death and taxes. And taxes are due tomorrow, so I hope you're having a 1040 easy weekend. Another thing that is certain, that we're about to play some trivia. Look at my jacket. Y'all like my jacket, y'all? Last time I wore this, I said I, I joked that I looked like, I don't know, but today I kind of look like a, like a host. I actually look like a host today. But first, don't miss tomorrow's Music Monday, number one, because I'm hosting it, <laughs> duh. And number two, because we are finally announcing the winner of our iHeart Play to Win sweepstakes. That's right. Some lucky player has already won two tickets to the iHeart Country Festival on May 4th in Austin, Texas. They're even getting airfare and hotel. It's pretty dope. Austin's fun. So what more could you ask for? Besides maybe like a free motorcycle with a sidecar full of Texary hick uh, hickory smoked brisket, riding a hog while eating a cow. Yeah. As a vegetarian, I'll, I'll pass. But uh, all right, let's play this game. This is how we do it when we play Words with Friends Live. I will ask you 12 questions, each with three multiple choice answers. You'll have 10 seconds to tap the correct one on your phone, and then your phone will vibrate when you only have three seconds left, so don't freak out. If you answer all 12 correctly, you will be getting a taste of some of our juicy $3,000 jackpots. It's enough to go around for everybody, literally. Now hook yourself up to that Wi-Fi and make sure that your battery is far in the green as Tiger Woods is. Are we ready? I think we are. Let's play. <laughs> Let's get to it with question number one. Give is to take as question is to what? Answer, Noitsuk or quilt? Tick tock, tick tock. Now the phrase give and take is the practice of making mutual concessions or to compromise. One example of give and take would be agreeing to do the dishes if someone else decides to make dinner. Otherwise, if you just eat the dinner that someone makes and then you don't do the dishes, it's not really a give and take, it's just a take and take. And also, then I ain't gonna cook for you no more. <laughs> the correct answer is answer. That's right. If you didn't pick answer for your answer, that's okay. Keep playing in spectator mode. You'll earn a point for every correct answer, 15 points gets you a mystery box full of coins and power-ups. So stay to play. No losers on our show. Question number two. Launching his career in 1941, Humphrey Bogart is most known for what? Acting, film directing, or screenwriting? Now, I'm not sure how this guy's name got by the old time Hollywood name changer, but Humphrey Bogart is his actual birth name. Alpha Cat's my, my real name, just... In case you were wondering, the word Bogart is also an expression that means to keep for yourself. But if you've got some of this jackpot, I promise you, you have full permission to Bogart all of it. Well, let me get $5 first. The correct answer is acting. Spoiler, you can stay in tonight's game by using an extra life on any question that you get wrong, except the last one. Get one by tapping the heart, uh, the heart icon during the countdown before the game. That shares the game with a friend, and it'll give you an extra life that you can use next time you play. So that's how we do it. Question three, over 16,000 moving forward. Which business is most related to prohibition? Speakeasies, flappers, or the Gilded Age? Most related to prohibition. Prohibition is the act or practice of forbidden something by law. In particular, it refers to the sale and consumption of alcohol. The first half of the 20th century saw periods of prohibition of alcoholic beverages in several countries, including the United States, Denmark, Iceland, Finland, and Canada. The worst part about not being able to consume alcohol is that you had to blame your bad decisions on yourself. So it's all on you. The correct answer is speakeasies. They're also called blind pigs or blind tigers. Speakeasies were illicit liquor shops or drinking clubs where people would go and consume booze and party like it was 1899. After Prohibition ended in 1933, most of them shut down and they're all Starbucks now. Question four. The third eye is defined as a symbol for what? Insight, memory, or love? What, what is that, what's your third, third eye do? Let me know. My favorite idiom about eyes is probably, your eyes are bigger than your stomach, which means that you've taken more food than you're actually capable of eating. Guilty, every time. 
This happens a lot at Vegas buffets, but that's because there's so much money. It's like $75 for lunch, so that means you have to put $75 worth of food on your plate and then stuff it and cram it all down into your stomach swamp. I don't know why I just said stomach swamp, but I now feel uncomfortable. The correct answer is insight. A third eye is a mystical concept of an invisible eye, which provides perception beyond ordinary sight. It's also called a mind's eye or inner eye, although I wouldn't recommend looking that up on WebMD. You're going to get the wrong stuff. Question five. What is the origin language of helium? Farsi, Old Norse, or Greek? Choose now. Tick-tock. Helium is colorless, odorless, tasteless, non-toxic, inert, and a monatomic gas. Also, its boiling point is the lowest among all the elements. Everything I look for in an element is perfect. But seriously though, jokes aside, how do you boil helium? Or rather, why would you even want to boil? Who figured that out? Maybe for a clown cooking show or something? I don't know. Maybe they use balloon animals to cook. I don't know what they do. Clowns creep me out a little bit. The correct answer is Greek. Its origin is late 19th century from the Greek word helios, which means sun. It's because its existence was inferred from an emission line in the sun spectrum. Who figured that out? How y'all doing all this? Cool. Well, anyway, now we just use it to talk in high-pitched voices. Don't do that. It's actually dangerous for your voice box. Question six. Which word does not have a definition relating specifically to smell? Senescence, odoriferous, or malodorous? Senescence, odoriferous, or malodorous? It's like a Harry, Harry Potter spell. Sense of smell can affect your emotions and, mem and memories. For example, the smell of tuna fish from the guy sitting beside you on a plane might make you angry. Random, but not only does fish smell bad, but for some reason, all food smells bad on an airplane. So if you're the person unwrapping leftovers on a flight, I just want to make you aware and let you know that your food stinks. I hate that. The correct answer. It's senescence. It means the loss of a cell's power of division and growth, or it can mean the condition or process of deterioration with age. That's why it's good to win money. Great segue. So you can buy yourself a sports car and get your own mortality. Works for everybody else, I think. Question seven. Which of these cities is nonfiction? Candor, Landview, or Dhaka? Candor, Landview, or Dhaka. Pick now or forever not get that money. Let's talk about some cities, shall we? Mexico City is considered the largest city in North America according to population. New York is the second biggest city and Los Angeles is the third. A. The difference between a city and a town is that it's of a greater size, population, and importance. It's kind of harsh. Listen, if you're in a town, don't take it personally, okay? Don't define yourself by that definition. You, you matter. The correct answer is DACA. Landview is a fictional soap opera town on one life to live. In case you're a big fan of that soap opera, I hate to break it to you, that's not real life, and that's a city where most of the population at some point ends up having amnesia. So, uh, spoiler alert. Question eight. Which movie did not contain a dragon that could talk? How to Train Your Dragon, Dragon Heart, or The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog? I kind of wish the dragons existed. That'd be pretty dope. Speaking of, where are my Game of Thrones people at? Well, we're not talking about the TV shows right now, but we are talking about the Mother of Dragons, and even though I seriously need to stop talking about Game of Thrones, but it, start, it starts tonight. I'm excited. Back to talking about dragons. What would be terrible is if you had a dragon that would never shut up and always wanted to talk during Game of Thrones. Like, yo, be quiet, bro. Your breath is hot. Ruining it for me. The correct answer is how to dra train your dragon. The 2010 movie is about a young viking who becomes the unlikely friend of a young dragon. But the dragon couldn't talk, so I guess he trained him with like a spray water bottle, sign language, wing language. I don't know how they did it. Ain't none of my business. Question nine. If you sleepwalk, you are known as what? A, ped a pedagogue, unconscious objector, or somnambulist? Pedagogue, unconscious objector, or somnambulist? Sleepwalking is a phenomenon of combined sleep and wakefulness. It's a sleep disorder that belongs to the parasomnia, uh, parasomnia family. Those are sleep problems that involve abnormal movements, behaviors, emotions, perceptions, and dreams. On the bright side, sleepwalking is a great way to get your daily steps in, but on the downside, you might wake up injured and in another city, which that ain't cool. The correct answer is somnambulus. That's right, we got 
1990 got that one right. The word is a late 18th century and it derives from the Latin word somnus, which means sleep, and ambular, which means to walk. If you were sleepwalking in the late 1800s, though, people would probably think you were a witch. So, good thing we live now. Question 10. Which word does not have a definition that involves facing downward? Pother, prone, or prostrate? Pother, prone, or prostrate? I'm here. I'm just here for the alliteration. Related, we are also getting downwards towards the end of today's game. See what I did there? Now, while you're answering this question about things that are downward, another thing that is downward is the popular yoga position, downward facing dog. That's the one where you get on your hands and knees like a dog and then hope you don't fall and embarrass yourself in front of the class. Yoga is harder than you think. The correct answer is pother. Pother means a commotion or a fuss. Prostrate means to be stretched out with your face on the ground and prone can mean lying flat, especially facing downwards. So it's actually a lot like downward facing dog. Now I just taught you something. I need five dollars. Question 11. March 26 is the Independence Day for which country? Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, or Nauru? Pick now. In the United States, Independence Day is celebrated on July 4th and it commemorates the Declaration of Independence of the United States on July 4th, 1776. So what we do to celebrate in America is we have barbecues and huge mattress sales. Who decided that? Like today we celebrate our independence. We should have food, we should have some barbecue. Hmm, something's missing. We need something that'll just make it perfect. I know, mattresses. The correct answer is Bangladesh. They celebrate by hoisting their national flag above the government buildings and they illuminate public places and there's also special prayers that are held and special programs on TV, but they ain't got no mattresses though, so it can't be that lit. But you know what time it is? No, seriously, I'm not allowed to wear my big watch anymore. It's too flashy, but really, it's time for the last question. Question 12, question of the day. For all the money for the cheese, the quesos, the ducats, the fromage, the racks, the cheddar, the money. Which type of linguistic morphology is defined as taking an item and process approach? Morphing based, word based, or lexeme based? Hmm. I was just asking myself this earlier today. You know, all the lexemes and the morphemes, typical stuff. Morphology is surprisingly not the name of the guy from the Matrix. It's a word used in linguistics. Morphology is also a branch of biology that deals with the form of living organisms and the relationships between their structures. Ain't that cool? To me, morpheme sounds like what you see at a nurse after surgery. You also have a stuffy nose and you just kind of out of it like, Marsh, catch the morpheme. I dislocated my shoulder twice. Morpheme is great. I'm not saying that don't take that. I mean, just it's the correct answer is lexeme based. For those of you wondering, a lexeme is a meaningful linguistic unit that is an item in the vocabulary of language. But let's talk about this meaningful jackpot because that is it. If you got all 12 questions correct, you will be taking home some moolah from our, our $3,000 jackpot. Let's, um, what should we do next? Oh, I know. Let's call out some winners' names. We have 609 winners. Congratulations, David J. Or alas, VG Money 15, Alexis, Shoddy, J Jimbo. Tron, 30, Lolita, W, Dale, there's a lot of y'all. I ain't reading 690 y'all names, but in spirit, I congratulate you all. Please join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, same app, and same face, and even more money for gifts to spend on me, right? No? I'm, I want gifts anyway. Lastly, if you haven't tried our theme game yet, why not add a little spice to your nights by checking out our Music Mondays, Wednesday, Hump Days, and Foodie Fridays. I have been your host, Iman Crossin, a.k.a. Alpha Cat. And this has been Words of Friends Live. Peace and hair grease. 